In a world where everything is presented to us at all hours of every day, on our phones, our laptops, on billboards, in stores, it's rare to find a bit of our world that still escapes our gaze. All around us exists a world of labyrinths, sprawling and complex networks carrying vital resources for modern society. For the most part, we don't even notice until something goes wrong. I'm, of course, speaking of the world's water infrastructure. In fact, the sheer fact that this infrastructure is unseen is a marvel of modern engineering. For not too long ago, the world's streets and houses were ripe with clear evidence of water, both clean and dirty. From chamber pots to water carriages as recently as the mid-20th century, to the open channel aqueducts of the ancient Roman Empire, water infrastructure has always been a crucial aspect of civilization. With this infrastructure now being unseen, we perhaps live in an era where water and its associated infrastructure is the most underappreciated it's ever been. So let's explore this unseen infrastructure and examine everything happening right beneath our feet, in our walls, under our roads, and in our cities. But first, we need to understand the gravity of the situation. This is an image of something known as a lift station. To non-water professionals, this may seem like a chain link fence, some concrete slabs, a light, and a generator, which it is, but water professionals know that below ground is a vital connection of sewer pipes and pumps which keep your waste and others moving along to a treatment plant, rather than back up into your house. Now, this piece of unseen infrastructure is probably better left out of the light, but it raises an important point. Most water infrastructure is unseen because it isn't glamorous. It can be grimy and unassuming, but but it nonetheless holds up the function and sanitation of our modern society, for some of us. 2.1 billion people still lack access to safe drinking water, and 4.5 billion people still lack access to standard sanitation infrastructure. This lack of access to the unseen infrastructure we hold so dear is estimated to cause nearly three quarters of a million premature deaths annually, according to a report from the United Nations. There's a significant global shortage of water infrastructure, which requires significant investment globally to solve the growing humanitarian crisis forming as a result. Additionally, flooding and climate change pose significant risks to existing areas with access to modern water infrastructure, demanding upgrades and maintenance, and even more investment. Thus, why it's important that we lift this infrastructure into the light. Solving the problems we face today rely on understanding the solutions we currently have access to. The best way to think about today's modern water infrastructure is binarily, split into clean or potable systems and dirty or wastewater systems. In order to understand, let's trace a drop of water throughout each. In clean water systems, water is typically the product being delivered, and thus, the infrastructure surrounding these systems involves gathering, purifying, and delivering said clean water to the buyer or user. In order for clean water to arrive at the faucets of households and businesses around the world, it needs to first get extracted. This is either done through wells or from lakes or rivers. In certain areas where existing freshwater sources are scarce, we may see intake from sources like the ocean, which requires desalination, or on an even smaller scale, rainwater collection. Once water is collected, it then needs to be purified, usually done so through water treatment plants. These plants, run by thankless water treatment plant operators, take the water, usually rife with dirt and bacteria, and run it through a series of treatment processes which remove these contaminants and purify water. For a detailed look at this process, you can watch my video linked in the top right here. 
Moving beyond treatment plants involves a series of large pump stations, water towers, millions of miles of pipes and junctions, valves, and sensors and monitors. Pipes are laid underground, spanning from treatment plant to every various connection throughout a city. Nowhere is the scale of this labyrinth of pipes and infrastructure as evident as in a city block of New York City. In densely populated areas like NYC, you get the scope of just how much water infrastructure exists under your feet. However, the scale of the matter is also well demonstrated in more rural environments. In sprawling American suburbs, miles of pipes often have to be laid simply to support one or two neighborhoods. In this photo, you can see a trench being dug to lay a singular pipe for a suburb of Chicago. In addition to these pipes, engineers and operators must keep close eye on the chemical concentrations in the water, as well as monitor pressure throughout the network to keep the treated water safe from harmful infiltration into the pipes from external sources. Additionally, Potable water supplies aren't just conveniences, they're life-saving necessities in areas outside of consumption. Clean water networks are used globally for fire extinguishing, putting heavy strain on them that engineers must model for to ensure pressures and network operation remains stable, even in high-flow events. But what about leaks? Leak detection is another huge industry. Water network operators must consistently maintain this unseen infrastructure and find and fix leaks. Some networks even use some interesting tools, like one water utility in the US, linked in the description, that uses a dog named Puddles the Leak Detection Dogs to sniff out the leaks and fix them where they happen. At this rate, you can likely grasp the scale of this work that water utilities, developers, and cities go to just to deliver clean, drinkable water. And we've only scratched the surface of potable water delivery. What about wastewater infrastructure? In wastewater systems, the outcome is usually the removal of water from a location, meaning that this infrastructure is all focused on getting water away and either storing or treating it for release into the environment. Starting with wastewater collection, when water is used by households and businesses, it usually leaves through drain pipes. This water is collected and routed to sanitary sewers running underground. Additionally, modern infrastructure must also manage stormwater to prevent flooding. In newer infrastructure, stormwater is collected through stormwater pipes, which are separate from sanitary sewer pipes. However, in older cities, combined sewer systems are common, intaking water from both drain pipes and houses and flows that are collected from weather events. All of this wastewater, or non-potable water, needs to be safely routed to either a treatment plant or some location for discharge. In most places globally, water that contains human waste or other contaminants must be treated at a wastewater treatment plant before it can be discharged into the environment. But how does it get there? As Isaac Newton once said, gravity. That's right. Nearly every sanitary sewer system globally is a non-pressurized gravity flow system, meaning that these pipes must be constantly at some incline to keep the wastewater moving and flowing. In order to do this, engineers utilize advanced hydraulic modeling tools to model and simulate all of this ahead of time. But I digress. In areas where ground elevation simply doesn't cooperate with this need for an incline, we're left with the first piece of infrastructure we mentioned in this video, lift stations. These lift stations pump the wastewater up to a higher elevation so that it can continue flowing throughout the system to the wastewater treatment plant with gravity. In wastewater networks, operators generally aren't going to be concerned about chemical concentrations in the water as it flows throughout the pipes given it's already dirty. However, these systems do still require monitoring. For one, leaks in wastewater systems 
can be disastrous, spilling untreated sewage and other contaminants into populated areas, or even worse, into potable water sources. In combined sewer systems, this is known as a CSO, or combined sewer overflow. Events which occur during heavy weather as stormwater surges into the system and mixes with the sewage. Sometimes these networks overflow during these events, which is never a desired outcome and usually results in fines and fees for the network operator. Wastewater systems have to be monitored for dangerous levels of gases like hydrogen sulfide, a gas formed when sewage is agitated, which in high enough concentrations can explode or kill people, or both. Coming back to the wastewater system as a whole, the final piece of infrastructure that wastewater must arrive at is the treatment plant. Wastewater treatment plants collect all the sewage and wastewater in a city, treat it, and release it, known as effluent, into local streams and waterways. Now, in most cases, water that leaves a wastewater treatment plant is not safe to consume, but it is safe to release into the environment as monitored by a given area's environmental agency. But what about the sparse pollutants left in the water after wastewater treatment? As my old environmental sciences professor would say, dilution is the solution to pollution. As the effluent is released, it mixes with other cleaner water and the pollutants dilute out to a safe degree within a measurable distance from the plant, a process that is always very closely monitored by people who know what they're doing. To understand how wastewater treatment plants work, I also have a video on that linked in the upper right. At this rate, we've walked through the basics of clean and dirty water networks and gave an overview of the unseen infrastructure needed to keep them supported. However, these networks, often filled with aging infrastructure, require significant amounts of upkeep. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency estimates that the country will need to spend more than $744 billion over the next decade on just the U.S.'s aging water infrastructure to keep it running. While these numbers reflect estimates only focused on the U.S., the story is similarly daunting globally. Upkeeping water infrastructure is no easy task because at its core, it is unseen. This means that it usually needs to be dug up, inspected, and fixes involve a lot of site work and investment. However, it must be done. This is why when improvements are being made, they're often being modeled and planned well beforehand using today's advanced hydraulic modeling software. In the hands of the right department, engineer, consultant, or modeler, today's water simulation tools can save cities and operators millions in upkeep costs by making the right infrastructure management and construction decisions early on. With this infrastructure all going unseen, it becomes ever apparent to remember that much of our modern world isn't built on simply dirt, but rather mazes of pipes and pumps, tubes and drains, and possibly most importantly, the tiring and thankless work of water infrastructure owners and operators across the globe.